you are entering the bonus stage, a podcast produced in association with OceanofBees.com, with your host Marauder, Phoenix923, a podcast for all gamers, console and PC alike. Welcome to Bonus Stage. Hello and welcome to Bonus Stage, a podcast produced in association with OceanofBees.com. As always, I'm your host Marauder, and joined with me this week again is my co-host Phoenix923. Hello everybody. So, of course, we're going to start out this podcast by talking about what's new on OceanOfBees.com. If you guys would like to check it out, it's OceanOfBees.com. I think I've said that enough by now. And quit asking if it makes sense, because <laughs> even we don't know. Yes, don't, don't PM me asking what the point of that website name is. I don't know. But anyway, as for new videos, we have one new video up, One Year of the Inspector, the top ten lines of game dialogue, basically where he goes through the various games that he's reviewed and... Uh, I guess show some of the more hilarious character lines in it. It's okay. Mm. It's an alright video. It's fun. Not as good as his facial expressions video, but then again, <laughs> watching a guy in a top hat and a monocle try to make funny faces is... <laughs> it's always hilarious. <laughs> it's it's so much more entertaining than you would think. As for new blogs, uh, I should have one up soon by the time this posts for... Uh, my review of The Dictator with Sasha Baron Cohen and my review of uh, Ridley Scott's Prometheus. So if you guys want to know uh, what I, my thoughts on those were, go ahead and check that out. Uh, Phoenix and I actually went to see The Dictator. It was pretty good. It was okay. Uh, for for a lowbrow comedy, it was, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Okay, so now go check out my review of Prometheus and forget about The Dictator part. <laughs> Anyway, moving on to the news section. The only real news I have is that Pikmin 2 finally came out on the Wii! Woohoo! And I have a problem with it, slightly. Given the fact... Well, my only real issue is that Nintendo didn't make a bigger deal of this. Which is very surprising, given the fact that it's Pikmin. Well, just... I know they got the Wii U coming out soon and all that, so... You know, they don't have a lot coming out for the Wii right now, but this is a pretty major title for them. Mm-hmm. And they did very little fanfare for it. So, I picked it up. It's only $20. Yep, and their Nintendo Selects. Uh, yeah, they did make the box art, box. the Nintendo Select box art, which makes no sense given the fact that it just came out and didn't have time to really sell over here. But uh, wondering if, I wonder if they were just taking into consideration the GameCube sales, too. Yeah, GameCube sales, European and Japanese sales. Mm. Because it came out over there in 2009. Boy. I'm, you know, I was a little disappointed when they didn't announce a release date, but now I have it, so uh, looking forward to digging into that and uh, having fun with that. And I believe you also had a something to bring up, Phoenix? Well, that's just kind of an interesting tidbit that I uh, saw on Google+. Uh, this one guy, I believe on Reddit, has been playing a single game of Civilization Two for 10 years. And uh, what's basically left of the landscape is just a wasteland. Uh, he stated that the polar ice caps have melted 20 times due to nuclear attacks on uh, each country. There's a mass-wide famine. And the three remaining cities have been in a war for 1,700 years. <laughs> uh, but uh, he states he will get out of that war as soon as he uh, figures out a clever strategy. But... I just thought that that was pretty interesting that this guy's been playing, you know, this one game for 10 years. Have you, you ever know? played a game for 10 years straight? I have never played a game for 10 years straight. Mm. I have one game. What game is that? Fantasy Star Online for the GameCube. Oh, yeah, you... <laughs> I bought that on release, and I play it consistently at least a little bit at a time each week uh, because I really, really like that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only time I stopped was when I got Fantasy Star Portable on the PSP, and I played that pretty consistently for a year. Yeah. Um, and I didn't play much of PSO then, but over the past ten years, it, it has been a game that keeps going in and out of my GameCube, in and out of my Wii, and it's awesome. Sweet. But no, that's quite... I don't know whether or not to call that a real accomplishment for the guy, or just disappointment. <laughs> Well, I just say he has uh, quite, quite, quite the devotion to that game, but yeah, it's amazing. I mean, especially right now with all these older franchises getting uh, 
what do they call it, Kickstarter? Yeah. Getting all these Kickstarter campaigns up and running just based on fans wanting to see these games. I mean, mm. it, you know, some some gamers have crazy devotions to things, and that certainly is one that that's a new one for me. Ten years of the same thing. Yep. I, I just hope that that guy has, like, a backup of that. <laughs> you know? Oh, he's got to have some sort of backup save. <laughs> that would suck if his computer crashed, like, right near the end. And I just got to do this one last move to defeat the army and crash BSOD. What? <laughs> what? Okay, reboot. Cannot detect hard drive. No! <laughs> <laughs> Although you gotta give you gotta give the game designers credit for that. I mean, oh yeah, especially for him to be playing it for that long. The game actually keeps going for uh -huh. ten years. Things keep happening. Uh huh. I mean, nowadays they would all be charged DLC for later. Like, <laughs> oh, you want to have another city in your in your war? Oh, that's that's a hundred <laughs> Microsoft points or whatever. Uh huh. But enough about that. Anyway, uh, so I had a quite a bit of. A, Quite a bit of a revelation earlier this week was uh, when I bought my PlayStation Vita, and this will lead into our little rant section, by the way. When I got my PS Vita a couple weeks ago, I bought a copy of Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus used, and because it was like ten dollars cheaper. But anyway, there's no manual in the box. Yep. And from what I understand, uh, there's no manuals for Vita games at all. Unless if they're the really high end games? No. No? No. Huh. The only time there's ever anything in that spot where the manual would go is if the game has an online pass and needs a code. Oh. That's the only thing that's in the box otherwise. Now, there is a digital manual, of course, in the game. Like, you can access through the game menu and all that. But it just got me thinking about all of these... You know, just just the history of gaming and how I just don't want to see the manuals go away. Yeah, no, those are an integral part to the. You know, just 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 to open up the game. I mean, it gives you something to read on the ride home after you bought it too. You know, just let you get to. Which know, I just did with Pikmin Two. Yeah, yeah, which you just did as we were coming back. Yeah. And it, it gets you, you know, a little bit familiar with the game. You know, even before you play it. And it's just I mean, I mean, heck, I was even reading off that part about the Pikmins growing the buds and the flowers, and you, you it, yeah, and I like, did not know that. Yeah, you said what? Oh, that matters. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. that makes them stronger. Oh, okay. Yep. I mean, and you've played Pikmin one. I've so played it's like, Pikmin one and two, and I've beaten Pikmin one, and haven't beaten Pikmin two, but I did get quite far in it. And, 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 no and, and yeah, I still, yeah, I still did not know about the whole maturation of the Pikmin, the the ones that had the flowers were stronger. I, I just thought that hey, it's just a graphic difference. Yeah, you know? it's like it's just to look cool mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Just just to bring a little variety to the Pikmin, you know. Yeah, that's what I thought. But yeah, that all came from the manual. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago, Ubisoft announced they were no longer going to print manuals with anything. Yep. Uh, I think it was after uh, No More Heroes 2 came out. Any game released after that, they're not going to have any manuals in them. Yeah. <laughs> For their <laughs> reason is just so that they don't cut down any more trees and they're ecologically yeah, there's, safe. Yeah, there's basically two reasons. There's the real reason and then there's the uh, the PR reason or the or the press reason. Yep. The reason they tell everybody is because that yeah that we're environmentally friendly. We're not going to cut down trees for paper anymore. Okay, but I know the real that, reason. That, that's a nice sentiment, but we know really why you're doing this. Yeah, you're really doing it because you don't want to pay to have them printed. Exactly. You're still going to have to pay for someone to make them because... Because you have the digital copies right. that people can download. And you can go on their website and download the manuals and whatever, but I'm just saying, like, if I'm sitting... Usually when I sit and play a game... I'm not online. Yes. I'm not, I'm away from my computer. If I'm playing a console game, if I'm playing a computer mm -hmm. game, of course my computer's running. But if I'm playing something on my PS3, my Xbox, my Wii, or whatever, I'm not looking online. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. And so to have a manual there just for quick access, like coming back months after you know first playing a game, you get through the tutorial, and then you just kind of shelve it for a while, 
Come back. I don't remember what button is the button that yep. does this function. Exactly. Oh, let me get the manual out. Oh yeah, it was it was X. Oh, of course. Or or oh yeah, X Y and up does this special thing that I need to get through this area. I did. I I remember the game telling me this, but I don't remember. Since it's been so, since it's so been long. so long, it's just left my brain. So manuals serve an integral purpose, and the fact that Ubisoft uh, doesn't print them anymore was really a deciding factor about whether or not I should. Uh, ever buy their games again, and I really haven't. I think the last Ubisoft game I bought was Splinter Cell Conviction on Xbox 360, but I got that for $7 at, like, a blockbuster. Yeah. yeah, no, the last Ubisoft games that I bought, I can't remember what order, but it was uh, on Steam. Uh, it was either Beyond Good and Evil or the, the uh, Prince of Persia complete collection thing. That was the last thing that I ever bought for Ubisoft. Oh yeah, if you want to count stuff I bought on Steam. But but given you know, physical copy wise, the last thing I bought was No More Heroes 2 from Ubisoft. Right. And that was... Well, see, good. like, I'm okay with it if it's like a Steam game that you just buy and you download because mm. obviously it's a digital copy. Yeah. But... The thing about me and, and my collecting of games is I don't count any of the games uh, that I have on Steam as a collection, you know, like, yeah. like I don't say, oh, I have a I have 100 Steam games. I do, but I don't count them. Mm -hmm. Unless the game links to Steam for security reasons, like Left 4 Dead, or uh, not Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, Fear 2 did, and Fear 3 do. Yeah, Fear, yeah, Fear 2 and Fear 3. I, I have physical copies of those. Yep. Those I count. Mm -hmm. I don't count anything I don't have a physical copy of. And that's not to say that downloading games, you know, that I'm not for it. I'm just saying I don't include them as part of my overall collection. Yeah. Because I can't... I don't have it in my hand. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, no, I understand that. I understand why they don't include manuals with those, but it's just disappointing because the Vita's not anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh... Nintendo even didn't, didn't EA stop too. I heard they were going to. I don't know if they have or not because I have not bought an Electronic Arts game in years. Yeah. So, unless it's on Steam. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I have no idea. I don't remember. Yeah. Um. Even Nintendo is starting to kind of go that route. If you. Yeah. Yeah. If you've bought any of their recent titles. All you get is just this fold-out pamphlet. Yeah, all the three D all the three DS games don't have really a book. It's more of like a poster, uh -huh. and that's really disappointing. But I mean, at least there's something there, I guess. You know, there's something to say about yeah, literally there's, there's having at least it. something you can reference to. It's not like what was it, Insect Armageddon, that gave you a pamphlet that said, "Go here to download the digital manual." <laughs> yeah, there was. Yeah, I went out and bought Insect Armageddon for Xbox 360. I and we get we get back to the house, and I was like, this doesn't have a manual in it. And I remember looking online because it was in a in a protective security. It, it plastic was in a case. protective security plastic case, and it was and factory it was, sealed. Yeah, and it was sealed because I bought it from Best Buy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay, well, this obviously didn't get taken out of here. Like if it was a GameStop and it was just sitting against the wall, like yeah. So that would make that made me think that okay, it's not Best Buy's fault. It's it's the publisher's fault. They didn't print a manual, and so I thought, well, maybe they just forgot. Like maybe mine was the one in the line that didn't get it tucked in there or something. And I don't know. So I go online, and sure enough, there is no manual. Uh, sure. What's even worse is games like uh, Tales of the Abyss on 3DS. Mm -hmm. They have a manual, but then you get to the back, but, but, and it but, says, but there's only half of it there. Yeah, it's only half there. <laughs> so then they said, okay, well, if you want to know more, if you want to read more, here's our web address. To go download the whole manual. To go download the whole thing. I, you know, and you might say this is just me trying to hold on to my nostalgia, because I, I still have the the game manuals for all my Super Nintendo games and, and some of my NES games and such like that. And I like to sit and read them and look at them and the art. I mean, if you, if you look through the Link to the Past... Oh yeah, game there, manual. There's a lot of hand drawn art in there. There's a lot of incredible stuff in there, mm -hmm. and 
nowadays you just don't see that as much. No. I mean, heck, even when you do get a manual, it's generally all black and white. It's generally all black and white and maybe four pages long. <laughs> like, here, I'm going to prove a point. Now, I just went out to the store today and bought a copy of Pikmin 2 and... What's this other one? Never Dead. Never Dead for Xbox 360 because they had them for a... They had a deal for them, so... Just buy to get one. Not. Okay, excuse the horrible audio quality that's about to happen given the fact that I'm going to use my knife to get this open here. Well, I use a key. Because this game is published by Konami for the Xbox. I think it's also on PS3. Pretty mm -hmm. sure. Yep. And I just want to do a com comparison. Now, Phoenix, if you grab the Phoenix, uh, the uh, Pikmin 2 game yep. and crack that open, that manual in there, I think, is like 60 pages. Uh, it is... Yeah, 60 pages. Okay, well... 60 pages, but uh, it, it, it is in multi-language. But still, it's in 60... It's 60 pages long and in full color. So, like, what, 20 pages of that is English or something? Uh... Yeah. Give or take. 19 pages. Okay. 20 if you include the warranty and service information, but... But still, twenty pages. Right. Okay. So, so that that that's still quite a bit to you know read up on if you want. All right. So now I've opened my copy of Left of Left for Dead, <laughs> Never Dead. Crack it open here. Well, I will give them credit. They didn't cut the little recycle <laughs> symbol out of the plastic case. That's always nice. Uh. Yeah. This manual is. Yeah, nineteen pages English. Twenty pages if you include the. Oh no, this is this no, is actually no, no, Spanish. No, that's Spanish. Oh, and that's another language. Okay, so the English portion of this is seven pages. Black and white, no color. I mean, I don't even know why they even bother showing pictures of the game screen. I can't tell what anything is. Mm -hmm. I can't tell what's going on. But, I mean, this thing weighs even less than an ounce. The Pikmin 2 one weighs... A hefty amount, especially mm -hmm. in comparison. So what I'm saying is, like, a manual is very important to a game. At least it was. Yeah. It told you the controls. It told you the enemies you were going to run into. The basic style of gameplay. Heck, it might even include bits of story. Yep. That you would need to play the game. That that, that would never have been covered in the actual game. Right. And I know that's because, like. They had to mine their limits back then and, and, and make a game that fit within such a limited amount of space. But, you know, there's still a lot that can be done in a manual that needs to be there. Mm -hmm. It's just the amount of information that, that I think even game tutorials just do not cover. You know, I, I remember manuals, like, aside from telling you, here's what A does, here's what B does. They would also give you a little tips and insider information to tell you, you know, you might you might want to do this, you know, yeah. during this type of situation if you if you ever run into it. Super, you know, Super Metroid's manual did that a lot. Mm -hmm. It would say like it would say like, oh, look for if you don't know what you're doing or where you're going, try bombing stuff until you find a door or a pathway. Yeah, and it's like, oh, okay, because when you're ten, mm -hmm. like I was. I needed somebody to tell me that. Exactly. I mean, I, I know back then the games were more niche and not as widely available, or I guess what as widely appreciated mm -hmm. as they are now. So you couldn't really find another person to talk to about it, and if you did, that was that was like a whole <laughs> other language. That was one godly moment you would run into because you're you're just sitting here exchanging information back and forth. Well, how did you do this? Well, how did you beat this? And where did you go for this? And I remember uh, again, Super Metroid was I couldn't figure out how to do the wall jump. Yeah. And so I was stuck in this one area where you had to wall jump up, up and out. Mm -hmm. And a, a guy I knew at school who was a couple grades above me. Uh, I knew he had the game. And so I asked him, I said, did you ever get past the the part with the koala bears? And he goes, oh yeah, sure, yeah, no problem. 
why are you having issues? I'm like, yeah, I'm having issues. So I gave him my game, and he went home, and he, I guess, got through there, and then I, I said, just get, just get me past that and save, and I'm done. And he did, and I was able to play through the rest of the game and actually beat it then for mm -hmm. the first time. But the thing about it is, I needed the manual to tell me how to do that, which I later found out was in the manual. Yeah. But it's like, manuals are necessary, because if I had never found that guy, mm -hmm. I'd have been completely stuck. Yep. Same thing with uh, Super oh, Mario oh, World. Oh, 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 wait. Uh, the, the Metal Gear Solid, how... Uh, I know that this isn't technically in the manual, but it's the, the, the whole the whole thing with contacting Meryl, you know. You have to look on the back of the game on the back of the game box to, you know, see what her codec information is. And that's how you find out there's no other way in game. And I think that something like that like could have been like in a man manual, like as a special form of information. And, also, um, and, it, and it's a pretty clever way, you know. Mm -hmm. You got to do some investigating on yourself. Oh yeah, there's a lot of fourth wall kind of things there mm -hmm. that yeah could be utilized also with the manual. The other thing is uh, with with games that used to have passcodes, they would have those pages at the back. Oh yeah, the notes pages. Yeah, yep. and you, especially on the original Metroid for NES, I would fill those up. Yep. So quick with passwords. Mm hmm And it's just useful. I mean, now everything's online. You can go and download a list of of passwords or level select codes or whatever. But I don't know. Like I said, when I play a game, I'm not online. Yep. I really don't want to be online. I, I try not to be online because it, it just breaks the game experience. You yep. know? When you get stuck at a spot and you go, well, crap, because... Whenever I get stuck at a spot, I try everything in my brain that I can think of just to avoid getting online, just to see if I can figure it out for myself. And and trust me, me going online to look up how to do something on like a on like a online fact or something, it's it's my extremely last option. You know, I will say it can be useful. Uh when I was playing through Castlevania Lords of Shadow, there were a couple moments near the end that I needed a, a, a walkthrough. I needed some direction because you can get lost in that game fairly easily. Mm -hmm. Or at least get lost as to what to do. And so, yes, I have... I, I'm not sitting here saying I haven't used online gu guides or oh, yeah. FAQs. Yep, yep, I'm just saying either. I generally try not to utilize them because it really bre breaks the flow of the game. Unless I am absolutely at my wit's end. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, I have to use one because I want to see the rest of the game. But, yeah, it's like... Now, game companies just don't see the manual as important because they go, well, we have a tutorial level at the beginning that explains how to do everything. But well, the well, but the there, problem well, is problem. I don't. But the yeah, but my issue is like I don't need a a prompt every single time I do something. Well, well, no, it's just the, my my problem with the with the tutorial is that that's the only time you'll see it is right at the beginning of the Not game. Not necessarily because they could always come up with like little pop ups on screen like press A to do to use the door. I, I know. Uh -huh. I, I got uh -huh. it. Thank you. And God, don't even get me started on how complicated the fighting games were. Oh, yeah. Remember Street Fighter Two, Killer Instinct, stuff like that? You would need that book. Yeah, you need it, just because it explains all of the movesets for all the characters. Maybe even not. Killer Instincts would show, like, just a couple of basic moves, and they'd be like, yep, this is the basic, you know, couple movesets. And then from there, you could get more complicated and more complicated as you played along. But, yeah, uh, Street Fighter Two, it would show you a couple... Mm -hmm. I mean, you could hide things. Like, manuals would hide things. Yes. Not show you the last boss. Not show you the next boss in line. But they would get you. They would give you a good start. Yep. They would give you a good starting off point, and from there you could work it around. But anyway, I'm just hoping that you know, on the next generation of consoles, on the Wii U, on the Xbox 720, the PS4, whatever, that we start to see these manuals come back. 
They are important. They are necessary. How does the Vita handle the manuals, though, online? Uh, it's not online. It's it's a well, well, wh it's well what, whatever. How how how, do you, how does that all work? When you go to select the game, mm -hmm. it'll bring up the game screen, and it'll have like start game and all that stuff on it. Yeah. And then up at the top, it'll have a manual, mm -hmm. like a little book with a question mark. You press that, and it loads up the digital manual. Yeah. And then you can flip through it. Can you do that like while you're still playing the game too? Oh yeah, if you're playing the game, you hit the home button, it'll dump you back to the home screen. You can hit the hit the manual button again or hit the manual on the screen and it'll bring up the manual. Okay. So you can yes, you can pause the game, go out, look at the manual. But what I'm saying is like I don't want to have to do that every 5 seconds. Like I know it's almost the same thing as having the paper manual but sitting next to you. You're still breaking the game experience. Yeah, you're stopping yeah. the game. Well, you'd have to stop the game either way. But what I'm saying is, like, I like to have the manual for quick reference. Mm -hmm. Because the digital manual, what I hate is there's no search functions in them. Yeah. So you can't, like, like oh, I need to know how to wall jump, for example. Mm -hmm. Table of contents, wall jump on page 20. Well, then you got to sit here and flip through every page. Right, then you got to go, you know... Swipe, 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 all the way to get to page 20. Well, there's not even, like, a search function. Like, if you could bring up, like, a find, and you type in the word, like, I want to know wall jumps. So you just type wall jump, and it brings up, like, all of the pages that have to do with that, plus they're all highlighted in the text. Mm -hmm. If you could do that and make it a little bit more convenient, I guess. But, again, there's just something about having a manual. Yeah. Having a physical copy of something that's, I don't know, there's just something about it. Yeah. That I kind of prefer. Just like the tactile feel of, you know, reading a book. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. There was a book I read a while ago called Ready Player One. Yeah. Which is a great book, by the way, if you're into video games at all, or 80s pop culture, I guess. Uh, even I didn't get all the references, but the book itself was great. And you could get the ebook, no problem. Mm -hmm. Like, I have an ebook reader on my iPod, and it's, and I could get the ebook for. A dollar ninety nine ninety nine cents, whatever. But I went out and found the the paper book, the actual physical book from the library, and had it special ordered so that I could borrow it out and read it. And there's just something about having the weight of the book, the feel of the pages, and the knowledge of knowing, like, look how far I am, like how many pages are I've turned. Mm -hmm. and there's some. There's a very good sense of accomplishment there. But again, I'm getting into books now over... But it's the same kind of concept. I want to have this manual because I want to be able to flip through it and feel it and look at it and, and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Because as much as video games are art, the manuals themselves can also be art. Oh yeah, they're just as much artful as the games themselves. I think the last manual that I ever actually truly considered art, but that wasn't a retro game, was Shadow of the Colossus on PS2. Oh yeah, that manual's amazing. The manual for that game blew my mind because you had to turn it on its side and open it mm -hmm. up, and it was beautiful. the The little scrolling on the page and the way it was all laid out. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot to appreciate in a game manual that I think we're going to lose. Yep. Going to all these digital manuals, and yeah, it's still there. You can still do these nice little layouts and such. But you can't appreciate it the same way. Mm -hmm. So on top of being very good for just quick reference, having it in the palm of your hand, having it readily available, I don't know, there's just something comforting about having a book to go with your game. Yeah. But anyway, alright. Keep manuals around, damn it. That's the <laughs> point. <laughs> manuals are extremely important. Do not lose, do not lose point of this. It's it's very important to keep the manuals around. Heck, even when I go buy old old used games, mm -hmm. I yeah, make do sure not you have that manual. I do not buy them without the manual, unless they're like Game Boy games and such. But yeah, if they're old retro games like Genesis, Super Nintendo, that kind of thing, where people generally get lost them, then I understand. But it's but something about like a PS2 game where you have a spot for it. Mm -hmm. And that's where it goes, and people still lose them. That that's what really confuses me. But when I go to buy a used no. game, 
it has to have the manual, otherwise I don't touch it. No, the thing that always blows me away about used games is how in the hell do you lose that insert? Oh yeah, people <laughs> lose the insert. You know, how, how, how is that accomplished? That has to be taken out for you to lose it. I have thousands of games and I've never lost an insert. No. <laughs> Losing a box, like an like an NES box, Super Nintendo box, that kind of thing, like yeah, it's it's a cardboard box. It's gonna get damaged. Or or you just threw it out at the time, not really thinking, like yeah, like oh yeah, I got my game, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was a kid, I threw out my you know the boxes for my Super Nintendo games. I still kept the manuals. Yeah, but I just never considered keeping the boxes as, any, as anything important. I did come the N sixty four. Uh, too little, too late, I guess. Anyway. But yes, keep the manuals around. Very important to keep them. It's kind of a shame. I think we spent way too long on this particular topic. Oh, well. But go... All right, moving on anyway. And of course, the last section as any podcast, since we don't have a question and answer section. Uh, by the way, please do remember to leave questions and comments down below. Uh, very much appreciated, and we will answer your question if we do get one. Uh, <laughs> Considering that... Not many people do. You have a high chance of getting your question answered. Yeah. <laughs> so. It will be answered on the next episode. So, you know, if you have something you want to ask us or, you know, you can go ahead and leave it down below and we will get to it next episode. But anyway, moving on to the games we've been playing recently. And I guess I'll start on this one. Right ahead. Let's see. A couple games I've been playing recently. I have been playing a bit of Hyperdimension Neptunia MK2 on PS3. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit farther in that. Still really liking it. Very simple RPG. Very straightforward. Uh, not much more to say from what I've already said, but still having fun with that. Highly recommend that to anybody who's an RPG fan. <laughs> if, if you want a wacky, crazy, tongue-in-cheek RPG. It's very much tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, with all the characters being named after handheld game systems and companies, and mm -hmm. you're saving the world of game industry, and it's, it's just, oh, you're just smiling the whole time. All the enemies, I just every time I think of Hyperdimension, I just think of that one little blue Dragon Quest slime mm -hmm. that they put a bear nose and bear ears on, <laughs> just and eyes. That's, that's awesome to make it look. Yeah, I know. It's just like, oh, that's hilarious. Anyway, been playing that, really enjoying that. <clears throat> Let's see, on my Xbox, I've been playing a bit of Sonic Generations again. Put that back in. Just had a hankering to rip through levels. And, yep, still having fun with it. Awesome game. Get it on Xbox, PC, or PS3. Uh, skip the 3DS version. I, I have that too, and I didn't much care for that. Other than that, what else have I been playing? Some Mario Tennis. Just picked that up. Having fun with that. Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus that I also mentioned last week. Nothing necessarily new that I've been playing. But still having fun. Still looking forward to getting into the two new games I bought, Never Dead and Pikmin 2. Which we will hopefully dig into right after this. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. Just, you know, your general games. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh... Let's see. Well, really the only new game that I started playing just because I need to start knocking some games off of my Steam list was uh, Bastion. Er, on, and I had originally started it just to say, well, how, how does this play? And at this time I did not have a compatible controller without me having to do some finagling just to make it work with the game. So uh, now that I do, and I just started playing it, uh, it's it, it's quite amazing, um, con especially considering that all of the artwork is it looks pretty much hand painted. Like yeah, I, the, graf uh, like, the graphics like, and art style in that game blew it, me away when I saw it. And and it's just filled with color. I love color. If you heard my Alice Madness Returns thing. But uh, it's just full of color. The enemies are pretty original if, if from all the ones that I've ran into. Um, the game is pretty difficult, uh, by the way. Not as difficult as like an older 
gen game, but it's still pretty rough to, you know, fight off these enemies, especially this one, I don't know, it's like a reaper with a hammer, all he does is just smack the ground and it just sends you flying, and when there's three of them, you're just in the air the entire time, and it's just teeth grittingly frustrating to try and kill them all without trying to, you know, not get hit yourself. But um, I, I played through the first couple of levels of that. I'm real. I'm really enjoying it. The uh, the game itself is very mysterious th for the story, and I just can't wait to see how this is all gonna turn up. Um, another game that I did just recently get was a uh, <laughs> Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing. I uh, love that game. Yes. Um. I've I've always wanted it. It's just the fact that I don't have a I Xbox, a an Xbox, or I mean, I have a Wii. I didn't really want to play it on the Wii though, since I'm more of a PC kind of guy. But uh, no, now that I have the controller and I can play it, and it was on sale for a very good price, I just said, eh, why not get it? I love the game anyway. I play it with a uh, Marauder all all the time whenever I come over, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, just a shame that they, uh, on the PC version, it does not have online multiplayer. It only has local co-op, which I take I take it as a lazy thing for Sega to do, just because they couldn't incorporate Steam in any way or find some way to for the PCs to locally host it, you know, something like that. But even though I've been playing it by myself, I'm still having a blast with it. I'll probably... My guesstimation is I'll probably only play it until I've unlocked everything, then I'll probably just uninstall it. But uh, other than that, you know, I, I still am really enjoying that game, considering how much we play it, you know, still on top of that. So, Mike, uh, the thing I'd be curious about is if whether or not the PC version has Metal Sonic in that extra level, because on Xbox I had to you, buy those. You can get Metal Sonic if you buy... Uh, Sonic 4 Episode 1 and 2. Oh, okay. You can, that, that's, that's the only way you can get Metal Sonic in that. Hmm. But uh, I don't know about that extra DLC level, though, that you got. Yeah. Yeah, I, rare, I never... I've never, ever, ever bought DLC for a game because mm -hmm. I'm very much against, you know, nickel and diming me for everything, but I played that game so much... And honestly, the prices of it were fair. It was a decent price for for a character. It wasn't five dollars. It was just you know. I I thought it was fair, so I didn't mind paying for those. I just hope that uh, once the sequel comes out to Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing, they you mean, don't. You mean Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing Transformed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but uh, I I really hope. Yeah, that's coming for PC, right? I have no idea. I, think I only it is. saw the opening trailer. It probably will if I, the first I one did. I think it is. Well, if it does, Sega, do not cut the online for the PC version. Because, I mean, when I told a Marauder that you know, Steam had it on sale, he was like, oh, yeah, cool, you, cool. Yeah, you messaged me. You're like, hey, it's pretty cheap. I'm like, awesome, we can play it together if I buy it. And then... And then, I, and then I said, well, no, we can't. <laughs> because yeah. Later that day, you're like, don't buy it. There's no online. Uh-huh. Oh. Well, that's kind of pointless for us then, isn't it? There's still local split there, yes, screen. There, there's still local split screen, but I could just do that with your Xbox version whenever I'm over. Yeah. Like, you know, that, that, that's, what, that's what my issue with it is. So The point was that so we could play together while we were... Yeah, while we were at our own house. You know, yeah. Instead of, you know what we're normally doing. next to each other. But, uh, but please, I really hope that there's some form of online, you know, because that, that would just make that game that much more amazing. You know, considering how much we love the first one. Oh, and we do love the first one. We, we highly recommend it to anyone. You know, uh, I was hanging out with, uh, my, one of my cousin's boyfriends, I think it was, and he had just bought Mario Kart Seven, mm -hmm. and we're playing it, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this is okay. It's all right." 
and he's going off on it like it's the greatest racing game ever and you have no idea what you're talking about and I'm like I prefer Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing and I I am not kidding Mm -hmm. It is better than every single Mario Kart game ever. And I, yes, I am including Mario Kart 64. I'm including Super Mario Kart. Everything. Yep. It is by far the best kart racer I have ever played. And I, you know, I'm a Nintendo fan as much as I am a, a Sega fan. And I grew up with Mario Kart. I love Mario Kart. There's nothing wrong with Mario Kart. But I prefer to play Sonic. It's... I don't know what it is. I guess it's just because it's really simple. It's yeah. very simple, very straightforward. Three buttons, that's all you need to know. Yeah. The drifting... And I like the drifting mechanic in it much better than in, like, Mario Kart DS mm -hmm. or Mario Kart 7. Uh, it's a lot simpler to pull off. It doesn't take forever to learn. And you can be competitive within just a couple of races rather than trying to learn how to... <laughs> Rock that D pad back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's just every time when me and Marauder play Sonic, man, we're on each other's bumpers the entire race. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if he doesn't win, you know, you know, whoever crosses the the finish line first, the other person's like <laughs> always like a hundredth of a second behind. Yeah, right behind. There's so many races; it was neck and neck to where we were just waiting for the computer for the game to tell us which one crossed first because. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and to be completely honest, I was uh, I wasn't against the game, but you know, mm. uh, I the point of it was that I didn't want to play it because usually kart racers like that are not that great. Mm -hmm. You know, they're mediocre at best. Nothing's as good as Mario Kart. But I'm a Sonic fan. I like Sonic. I wanted to play it. I bought it off Amazon for really cheap. And yeah, it is a very, very good game. Highly recommended. So yeah. Play it. Download it. It's <laughs> awesome. It's a lot of fun. Mm hmm Well, anyway, so is that all you've been playing? That's been pretty much all that I've played, you know, in the past week. Cool, cool. Alright, well, I guess we'll wrap this one up then. Uh, once again, please do remember to leave questions and comments down below. Uh, I would really much, very much appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. <laughs> it'll of... give us something more to talk about than just... <laughs> yes, it'll give us a section so we don't go on for 20 minutes about instruction manuals. <laughs> uh-huh. But all right, anyway. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Bonus Stage. I'm your host, Marauder. And I'm Phoenix923. And we'll catch you guys on the next Bonus Stage.